and welcome back to the Working Ink channel. And in my last video, I had a suggestion that was in the comments, and that suggestion was heated gloves. And I want to thank 99% Perspiration for that idea, because it's awesome, but I built something quite similar. It can be used in a heated glove application, but it can also be used in a whole load of other applications, which we'll get into a bit later. Um, this is what it looks like. It looks pretty cool, and we'll go into more detail about this, including temperatures and other things. Uh, but, let's build it! Okay, so the bare minimum materials that you're going to need is 5mm carbon felt, and the reason why I opted for 5mm is because it's much better at being a resistive heater than the 3mm version. And this is available on our store at www.workingink.co.uk. Next, what you're going to need is copper tape, and this is also available anywhere. Uh, you can, well, I say anywhere, I mean places online like Amazon, or you can go to places such as like B&Q, uh, easily found, quite cheap as well. And that is the absolute bare minimum materials that you're going to need for this. But obviously you can step it up a notch by putting it in a sealer bag. You can seal this, you can vacuum seal it, whatever you want to do with it. Um, just to make it look a bit nicer and also you don't get contact with metal. You can step it up a notch again <laughs> by adding a breaker switch into it. So this won't go above 40 degrees, it will cut out before it hits 40 degrees which makes this very safe. And breaker switches are literally pennies, they're pennies on the internet and you can get them really easily. And if you want to step it up another notch, if you want to step it up another notch, you can use this. This is a real thermal breaker. It'll, it'll tell you the exact temperature, but it's really big and it's really bulky, as you can see. So it's probably best not to use something like this. So let's actually get into the build. Okay, so let's build it. I would suggest starting off with your activated carbon felt square, and I would recommend cutting this down to 12 centimeters in width and about 13 centimetres in length. <laughs> 13 by 12. Perfect. Okay, so now you're, you've got your carbon square and it's 13 by 12. The next step is to get your copper tape, which is right here. So, I would recommend getting your tape and cutting it about two centimetres bigger than the actual square itself. And you want to cut out four pieces of this at the same length. And there we go, there we go. So now I've got all four pieces of my copper chopped up. The next part is to lay them actually on the square itself. You want to get as close as you possibly can to this edge leaving a little bit of room at the top and a little bit of room at the bottom so you have some overhang. This can always be trimmed later on. So, let's do it. There we go, so you just attach it onto there, push it down, and remember to keep as close as you possibly can to this edge. So there it is, there's one side, and you want to repeat this process for the other side. I'm going to skip ahead, because you've seen it, and I'll be back once it's done. Okay, so this is pretty much the, the bare bones of the finished project. You can now attach some sort of power supply or a battery to this and you can actually feed it getting hot which is pretty cool but this isn't exactly safe because you've got this exposed metal and obviously it's not really adherent on this so we're going to do a couple more things to make sure this is safe and everything is attached nicely so now this has been completed and we're almost at the finished product My, the next part would be to actually seal it in something 
and I would suggest something like this, just a plastic bag that you can get online, and I think these are called sealer bags. Uh, they can easily be sealed with a lighter or an actual sealing machine. And how I'd do this is I would measure out about, so you've got about a centimetre to a centimetre half and a half in width here and here. So all I'm going to do is cut this now. And we just want to make sure that it fits. There we go, so you want to have enough room so you can seal it this side, and also you want to have enough room so you can seal it this side. So what I'm going to do is trim this down a little bit so it's easier to handle. And there we go, that looks better already. So I'm going to move the camera now, back up, and I'll show you the next part, so I'll see you in a sec. So, before you seal this, I would recommend attaching some sort of wires to these copper bits. And the only reason is, is because later on you can attach things such as a battery, th uh, a battery pack connector, or um, you can heat it directly from the wires themselves, which is pretty cool. But, before I do that, I'm going to explain how to wire up this breaker switch. Um, so, all you want to do is, from your connector, so you want to find your positive cable, and then you want to attach that to the breaker, which is here, I've taped it up, and then, so you've got one wire from the breaker left, and then you've got another wire which is loose from the actual cable itself. So, the, the, the wire from the breaker, you want to either attach or solder onto one side of the heat pad, and then the other wire, you want to either solder or attach to the other side of the heat pad. So it will look something similar to this. So I've got my connector and then I've got my wires coming in. One of them is attached to this side right here. See it coming up and attached to that. And then the other wire attaches to the breaker which is here. And the breaker just sits on the actual felt itself and then the other wire from the breaker attaches to this side. And that completes the circuit, which means this will not go above 40 degrees. So now you've got your wires connected, it's time to actually seal this up. So you, all you want to do is grab your bag from earlier that you cut to size, and I'll show you both ways of doing this. You want to insert it, push it down as far as you can, push it to that very far corner as much as you can, so it's nice and flush with everything. Let's bring this down a bit more. And then, what you want to do is seed it. You can do this with either a lighter or an actual seeding machine. For this purpose, I'm going to demonstrate with a lighter, and then I'm going to demonstrate with the machine. So what you want to do is just slightly heat it up. So there you go, that side is completely sealed now, and I literally only did that with a lighter. So that's how easy it actually is. Next I'm going to demonstrate this side with the machine, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we sealed one side, and now it's time to seal the other side. So you can still see that this is not sealed, but this side has been sealed with a lighter, 
and this side's going to be sealed with one of these things, which is an industrial, I think it's a catering vacuum sealer. So they're a bit better than your average vacuum sealer. So let's not waste any more time and get on with it. Anyway, let's stop wasting time and actually sew. Sounds like a rocket ship. <laughs> and there we go, that is now. Oh, I think I, I think I accidentally sealed a little bit of the wire there. Um, but that is now sealed all the way along. So, I'm going to now attach this to something and see how hot it gets. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so welcome back. And now we're going to do the heating tests on the actual pad itself. So first off, I'm going to start off with 10 volts and give it about 30 seconds and see what temperatures that we're going to hit. And all we have to do is here I've got a power supply and all I'm doing is attaching it to the cables that we attached to the pad before. So now that's hooked up, it doesn't matter which way you put it, uh, which way you get it. Uh, so it could either be positive, negative, or positive and negative, it doesn't really matter. So we're, I'm just gonna put this up to 10 volts at 0 0.3 of an amp, which you can see here. And we're just going to leave that going for about 30 seconds and then I'll give it a heat gun temp, a heat gun test to see how much it's gone up. So this has been going for about three to four minutes now and at nine volts at 0.3 of an amp, we're hitting temperatures of about 27 point seven to I've, I've had temperatures up to 30 degrees but it's seen oh 28 so it's about 27 to about 28 degrees celsius at nine volts at 0 0.3 of an amp which is awesome because that's very low powered so i'm going to go to the next part of the video now i'm going to talk about more more test figures that i've got and it's going to be pretty cool so i'll see you in a second so there you have it, that's pretty much the finished product, and I'm going to go through a little bit of the information on this. So, to start off with, I'm, a list of applications that this can actually be used with, which I've researched, and this will and can be used in these applications. So, obviously you've got the heated gloves, which gave me the entire, the entire idea of this video, which again, thank you to 99% 99 perspiration. Um, the next is like winter clothing, uh, so jumpers and stuff, you can stitch it in and it will work absolutely perfectly. Uh, <laughs> heat therapy, which I did not know that could actually be used with this. So if you have a uh, minor muscle pain, um, they actually you can use heat pads uh, for about 20 minutes at a time to put onto the hurting muscles, and it will actually help relax their muscles over that, over that course of time, which is really cool. Um, you can also use this for a cheap alternative to a lot of stuff like uh, underfloor heating, it could be, and, the, and it could also be used with fermenters for actually making beers, wines and ciders, which is really cool because them pads alone are about £30. Uh, this heats up to uh, the amount of temperature that it needs to be, and you can even chuck a little thermostat on it so you can set it to exactly what temperature you want, which is, again, really awesome. <laughs> so. I do encourage other people to take this idea and experiment, their, uh, experiment for themselves and actually tell me what kind of results they get because the amount of applications that I've just come up with off the top of my head, well, I say off the top of my head, I mean, I'll write them down in my book, but they were my own ideas, which is pretty cool. And the next I want to go on to is temps. I've run four tests with my main one that I built, with obviously the breaker switch and the connector. But I connected this up to a power supply to simulate the amount of voltages and amps that go that are in a battery to this. So instead of connecting up a battery, I decided to do it for a power supply. And the temps that I got, so my test one was, I run it for about 30 seconds, and this was at 9 volts, 3 amps, so like a D cell battery, which is exactly what this takes. And the starting temp was 18.7 degrees Celsius, which is very low, and then 
by the time it finished after 30 seconds, the highest that I got was 24.2, oh, no, sorry. I got 29 degrees Celsius, and the lowest temp at the finish was 25.3. So even though it wasn't completely the same temperature all the way through, it's pretty much there, which is really cool. Um, my test two, I run it at 30 seconds at 18 volts, just to double that to see what kind of results that we're gonna get. That's equivalent to two D cells. And the starting temp was 20.4 degrees Celsius, and the finishing temp was 39.2 degrees Celsius. Uh, but the lowest temperature by the finish that I could possibly find with the temperature gun was 35 degrees. So it's anywhere in the range between 39.2 to 35 degrees Celsius, which is pretty cool. Uh, my test three, I decided to run it at a lower voltage. Uh, so I run it at about five volts, which is equivalent to um, three double A's, I think they're 1.5 each. Well, almost equivalent to, to, to three double A's. And that runs at about 0 0.2 of an amp. The start temperature was about 19.2 degrees Celsius. And the finishing temp was 23.8, which was the highest and the lowest finishing temp that I got was 22.1 degrees Celsius. So again, even at 5 volts, uh, which is not much, 5 volts, 0.2 of an amp, you can still get, you can generate a nice amount of heat off it, and that is very, very, very low power, which is, again, <laughs> really awesome. And then, yeah, my last test, which I did, I did 18, so I started off with 9, then I went to 18, then I went to 5, and then my final test is, I'll try and find a mid-ground, and that was 15 volts at 0.5 of an amp. And that worked. Obviously, you can mess around with the amount of voltages and amps that you want going through this, so you can find your desired actual temperature. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I do encourage people to take this idea further. If you've got any suggestions, please put them in the comments, and I will have a look at them. And if it's a really good idea, you know, I don't mind trying to do a video on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so again, thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you later. Bye!